purpose of this video is to assist staff with navigating the logistics of the dedicated COVID theatres at Royal North Shore Theatre Complex. The video will focus on the intubation and extubation of COVID positive or suspected COVID patients in these theatres. Please be aware that as practice is constantly evolving, this video is as up to date as possible on March 29, 2020. If you see any errors in this video or points of improvement, please do feel free to contact us. There are key differences in the sequence of intubating and extubating COVID patients that are designed to maximise staff safety and minimise the exposure to aerosolized particles. At the moment, we aim to perform all airway management of COVID patients in theatres 17 and 18 of the theatre complex, and these theatres have been turned into negative pressure rooms. We have designed cognitive aids to help ease the cognitive burden of working in these theatres, and we will use them to structure this video. Theatre 17 and 18 have a common observation room between them. Clean runners, either an anaesthetic runner or a surgical scrub scout runner, will usually position themselves here and use the large windows to see what's happening inside the theatres. There is a common large anteroom, and this is the site where donning of PPE will occur. And once the patient is in the room, all drugs and equipment must come through these doors. The theatres themselves have been stripped of all non-essential equipment. All remaining equipment must be cleanable or disposable. And any equipment that is required for specific cases, such as laparoscopic towers, diathermy, drugs or even airway equipment, should be brought in immediately prior to the case. The only exit to the theatre is through the main patient exit doors after doffing PPE inside the OR. The anaesthetic bay must not be used at any time during the case. A combined surgical scrub and anaesthetic huddle should take place in the observation room prior to starting the case. An anaesthetic huddle should then follow this to establish a shared airway plan prior to entering the operating theatre. The goal here is to minimise staff exposure to aerosol generating procedures. So if no difficulty is anticipated with the airway, we advocate an airway operator and airway assistant be the only two clinicians present in the room when intubation is taking place. Prior to entering the room, please ensure that there are viral filters firmly attached to the inspiratory and expiratory limbs of the ventilator, that a COVID airway tray is prepared Additionally, emergency drugs are considered and prepared if needed. We've created an aid for the items potentially required in the COVID airway tray. Both these items and any drugs should be placed in the theatre prior to the patient arriving. Please also initiate a phone call from inside the operating theatre to the anteroom prior to the patient arriving. Place both phones on speaker and ensure the anteroom phone is also placed on mute. This will act as a valuable communication system when the case starts. Hi Henry, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, so if you can just proceed to put your phone on speaker and mute, please. Sure. Thank you. So loud and clear, I'm putting my phone on mute. Thanks. Finally, please ensure the door is on a manual setting and open the theatre doors. Once the theatre is prepared, the airway team can begin donning their PPE in the anteroom using the guides on the wall. It is essential to do this with a partner and you must perform a buddy check. This video will not focus on donning and doffing and the particulars of PPE. We are working to address this in another video. You will however notice that during the next 10 minutes, one of the N95 masks does gradually slip down the face as the filming process was undertaken. We bring this to your attention to highlight the critical importance of buddy checking, both during the donned off, but also periodically throughout a long case. Finding ways through rehearsal and ongoing debrief to secure your PPE is vital. Once PPE is donned, the airway team can then go and collect the patient. The patient is transported to theatre from the ICU lifts opposite Theatre 7 with a surgical mask and standard droplet precautions. The anaesthetic staff allocated to the case will check the patient in and take them to theatre. The team should turn right at the theatre doors, walk in the direction of theatre 1 and pass the in charge desk. Then they make their way all the way round to theatre 17 and 18. This route will allow the in charge nurse to register the arrival of the patient. 
We recommend allocating a member of staff to clear the hallway to ensure a smooth and unimpeded transfer to the operating theatre. Once the patient is transferred onto the operating table, their bed should be left at the edge of theatre by the exit doors as an extra reminder that this door should not be used until the end of the case and aerosols have been cleared. Prior to pre-oxygenation, please check there is a viral filter at the end of the circuit and that all connections are tight with a push and twist. The patient should be pre-oxygenated in a 45 degree position. Oxygen flows to the Hudson mask should be stopped prior to placing the patient onto the face mask. A good seal should then be established using a vice grip and only then should one turn on the oxygen flow from the anaesthetic circuit. If possible, minimal flows should be used to pre-oxygenate for a full five minutes, watching the end tidal oxygen concentration. In the following scenes, a modified COVID-19 intubation will be performed. I'm ready for Okay, like the oxygen flows are off. Flows are up, bagging the patient. Confirming entitled CO2. You go on to the ventilator. Thank you. After the tube is secured, the airway operator should remove their top pair of gloves, sanitize the bottom gloves, and then reapply a second pair of gloves. The procedure should be repeated every time a patient, or the machine, or circuit is touched. At the same time, the CMAC blade should be bagged and any waste materials should be wrapped and discarded immediately. The top pair of gloves again should be removed, the bottom pair sanitised and a second pair reapplied. If additional drugs and equipment are required in the operating room, they must come through the anteroom using the following procedure. Henry? Yes, I'm here. Um, we need some more Remy fentanyl. Can I ask please that we get um, two milligrams of Remy fentanyl in 50 mils of saline to be brought into the anteroom. Okay, two milligrams of Remy fentanyl in 50 mils of saline. Thank you. Getting it now. 
The runner checks that the opposing anteroom door is shut and that the anteroom is empty. They then go in, place an item on a tray and leave it in the anteroom, then informing theatre of this via the speakerphone. Dan, Remy Fentanyl is in the anteroom. The person inside the theatre will then enter the anteroom after ensuring that the opposing anteroom door is closed. They then enter and pick up the item. Extubation is also an aerosol generating procedure and great care and planning should be undertaken prior to performing it. Like with intubation, it is essential to minimise risk to staff. Please ensure that only two airway clinicians remain in the operating theatre. They should be fully donned in PPE. The key principles to minimise the risk are nausea and vomiting prophylaxis, preventing coughing and careful consideration of oxygen flows when transitioning between airway devices. We have suggested a way in which this can be undertaken in the following sequence. Okay, now we're moving towards the end of the procedure, so we can start planning for extubation. Can you please give 400 micrograms of glycopyrrolate to minimise the pressure? Okay, so that is glycopyrrolate, yep. and I'm going to give 400 micrograms, that's the whole syringe, to minimise the pressure. Thank you. Okay, now we're about ready for extubation. Uh, we've ensured that our surgical and scrub team are out of the room. I'm going to put them up to 100% oxygen. Yep. Uh, we're going to suction the airway before we reverse. Sure. And we've given anti electric already. We have, yes. Uh, currently we're running for any fentanyl, which is inappropriate level for restoration. Okay. Uh, we've I did it three and four just before, okay. and the three and four was two. Okay. So we should be able to use 200 milligrams of the gun for this particular. We're ready to administer that now. Yep. We're confirming the remedy fentanyl is on three. Yep. 200 milligrams of the double that's going in. I'll touch that through for you. Jeff, how are you going there? Can you open your eyes? Great. Take a deep breath for me. Fantastic. Okay, so I think you've got very fresh breath. Happy? Yep. Okay. So we'll turn the flows off. Flows turned off. Flows come and go. We've got our mask ready. Yep. And then come into the juice time. We can get ready to do it. We'll take the cup down. Often flows it down. Great, taking the mask away. You're ready to do it for us. Placing that mask over the top. You can please take that mask off the mask. Flows coming up on the Hudson mask. After extubation and placement of a surgical mask on the patient, the room is for aerosol precautions for approximately 30 minutes. The patient will therefore need to be recovered in theatre by a PACU nurse and usually an anaesthetist for this period of time. The PACU nurse will need to don completely and enter the room via the anteroom. The anaesthetic nurse can doff and exit at this point. After approximately 30 minutes, the air in the theatre would have been recycled and aerosol precautions can be downgraded to droplet precautions. The anaesthetist can then doff and leave the room at this point and the PACU nurse will transfer the patient to the ward 
using droplet precautions. Okay, so um, this brings us to the end of the video and we'd like to say thank you so much for taking this time to listen and watch. We'd really like to thank all of you for everything you're doing, the courage and compassion, the inspiration during such unprecedented and uncertain times. We really hope you found this film useful, especially seeing this routine in our own familiar operating theatres, despite the fact that this is obviously a very rapidly changing landscape. We truly welcome any feedback, and if you'd like to download any of our aids, please do head over to our website, www.rnsascar.com.